Hello, YouTube viewers. In front of me is a scope that no longer functions. It served its time well sitting on top of a Benjamin XL series 22 caliber pellet rifle. I really liked this center point scope because of the feature set that it came with. It was a 3x9 magnified scope that came with exposed elevation and windage turrets, each click at a quarter MOA. It also came with a 40 millimeter adjustable objective lens. This allowed me to adjust the parallax to whatever yardage I was shooting at. It also had a nice mill dot reticle. Over the years, the heavy recoil of the XL series pellet rifle has taken its toll. The parallax has shifted a bit, almost a quarter turn, to where 50 feet is now focused at about 30 feet. This isn't a huge deal until you adjust the parallax out to what is supposed to be an infinite setting. Because of the shifted parallax, it's actually only focused out to about 50 yards, which makes it difficult to shoot beyond that. The other issue with this scope is a jammed windage turret. The elevation turret still functions properly and when both turrets are working, the reticle adjusts appropriately. The windage turret is jammed for the most part, but I've noticed that if I rotate the scope onto its side and tap the turret, I can usually get it to move a few clicks. Fortunately, Centerpoint scopes have a limited lifetime warranty, and when I called the manufacturer, they just decided to send a new one out because of the issues that I'm having. The downside, though, is that they no longer make this model and the current production comparable model doesn't have the exposed turrets or the mill dot reticle. Normally I wouldn't work on a scope, but since the manufacturer didn't want this one back and I like its features better than that of its replacement, I think some repairs were in order. Let's look at the jammed turret first. Before I can remove the turret, I need to remove the turret cap. Two Phillips screws at the top of this one hold it in place but others may have set screws around the outer edge. Once loosened, the cap pulls straight off. At this point, I'll remove the O-ring to keep it from getting damaged. Now I can use pliers to unscrew the turret. A really small strap wrench would also do the trick. Luckily, the turret got stuck at a point where I can remove the E-clip from the inner post. The rubber washer can also come off now. At this point, the turret isn't under tension anymore and it was pretty easy to shake it a bit and then twist it and shake it and twist it until the center post completely unscrewed from the outer ring. For reference purposes, here are all the turret parts laid out in front of the scope. In looking at the center post, you can see that the detent spring set screw had backed out enough to where it was catching the inner ridges of the turret. I put a dab of blue Loctite on the set screw and rotated it back in until it was just below flush. Screwing it in all the way would put too much tension on the detent and make adjusting the turret difficult. The inner post then gets screwed in until the retaining groove shows through the other side. Replace the retaining E-clip and rubber washer, then rotate the center post back out until the retaining clip catches. Hand tighten the turret back onto the scope and use pliers to snug it up. Reinstall the O-ring and turret cap and you're done. So now that the turret is unstuck, it's time to move on to the adjustable objective lens. Adjusting this part of the lens seems like it would be a huge task, but if you've got the right tools, it's actually not that hard. If you look inside, you can see a notch on a retaining ring that screws onto the inside of the objective. You can get to it by removing this end cap. Now you can see the threads that the retaining ring screws into. There's a notch on both sides of the retaining ring. The tool fits into those two notches and allows you to adjust it to the correct parallax. Here we have the correct tool to adjust the parallax on this scope. I'm just messing. This is a truss fastener that I trimmed down to 40 millimeters and then notched it so that it fit deep enough into the bell housing to adjust the ring. 
you could probably use large snap ring pliers to get in there and uh, fit both notches. But um, to be honest, cutting your own tool isn't that hard. I just used a hacksaw to cut down any piece of steel that I could find that was the correct thickness to fit inside the notches. You can see that there's a little play in there, but uh, it's close enough that it'll work just fine. So now that I've got the tool made and I know that it fits adequately, it's time to do some adjusting. I went ahead and mounted it back to the rifle, but these adjustments would be just as easy to do without it attached to anything. With the scope mounted, I measured out 30 feet, then set the parallax to a matching distance. When the parallax is set properly, both the reticle and the subject will be in focus. In my case, I needed to rotate the retaining ring clockwise, which shortened the distance between the eyepiece and the objective lens, thus extending the parallax from 15 feet to 30 feet. After a few minor adjustments, I was able to get the parallax set to 30 feet. With the parallax set, I put a dab of blue Loctite in the notches of the retaining ring, then reinstalled the end cap. Now it's time to check the parallax at distance. I did my best to mount the camera to the rifle, so we'll see how it goes. The initial focus was at 50 feet, and the edge of the grass is at 25 yards. This terrace should come to focus as I adjust the parallax out to about 50 yards. And the red gong should come to focus at about 70. Well, it looks to me like the adjustments worked and the scope is focusing at the proper distances as I adjust the parallax. The only thing left to do now is to ring the gong. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, like, and share. You can also check out my other videos and find pertinent links in the video description. And as always, I hope this helps, and good luck.